On this recording, musician Mike Marshall plays one of Lawrence Smart's custom mandolins. But the music actually begins a long time before a musician's fingers touch one of Smart's fretboards. The music has its roots in the woods near Smart's McCall, Idaho home. The first thing that that I'm going to look for is a spruce tree trunk that doesn't have any, or doesn't have many limbs on it. And that'll tell me there won't be any knots in the bottom of the wood. And there's a a tree right there that kind of has that character. It's not real big, but it probably would be big enough to make a mandolin out of. Let's, um, Let's walk over there and get a closer look. Lawrence Smart has the lean lines and long stride of a cross-country skier. He scans this thick stand of trees for what he calls tone wood, the native spruce. Engelmann spruce, I feel, really works well for certain instruments, uh, the mandolin family being some of those instruments. The wood is tight-grained, strong, yet flexible. It makes great music. Smart turns his ear to the trunk of a promising tree and pounds it with a fist. You can hear that resonance? Yeah. I don't know if I can so much as hear it, but I can feel it kind of transmit up and down there. Yeah, here we go. Back in the managed clutter of his McCall workshop, Smart searches for a chunk of spruce. He wants to show me how he tracks the musicality of tone wood from forest to workshop to recording studio. Piles of wood everywhere. <laughs> This looks like kind of like a piece of firewood. So if I can... But I can hear a certain quality that, that this, this really will impart into a, an instrument. Smart takes that raw wood and carves it into top and back plates, the wooden body of an instrument. He planes those plates down by hand, slowly, to about a tenth of an inch thin. As I work, I'll be listening to the sound of the plane and constantly flexing and feeling and as I hold the plate in a very specific place and tap on it I get an idea of the overall resonance as well as you carve it down several changes happen you know it gets lighter for one thing it gets less strong for another and then it also is becoming more resonant and vibrational. By that, he means musical. Lawrence Smart finds music all over his shop. You know, I joke that sometimes there's a musicality to even running the power tools because the joiner runs at a certain hertz and, you know, a certain note. And so I've even actually found myself harmonizing with the joiner as I'm back there working with my uh, earmuffs on to protect my ears. So, yeah, there's, there's music in my life all over the place, really. Smart started surrounding himself with music as a teenager growing up in Salt Lake City. In high school, he went to the Weezer Old Time Fiddlers Festival in Idaho and got hooked on bluegrass and mandolins. He began to play. And so how did that transition into making instruments rather than just making music? I've always had an interest in, in making things with my hands, even as a, as a kid. And uh, Well, you know, actually, at, at some point I wanted a better mandolin. And I wasn't really in a position to buy one, so I kind of had to make one. From that act of necessity, the pull toward instrument making eventually grew irresistible. You know, it was kind of a fantasy that, that I acted on. And uh, I guess with, with good fortune and, and some decent technique and craftsmanship, it all it sort of fell into place and, and I was able to continue on that path. If you detect a humble tone in Smart's voice, it's there. I'd read he didn't consider himself an artist, but simply built instruments for artists. Do you still feel that way, or is that true? Oh, absolutely. I feel like I'm a tool maker. But I really believe that what I do is about music. That's why I do it. Is I don't do it so I can create a beautiful sculpture out of wood. I do it so I can create something that somebody can use to make music on. That's a goal Lawrence Smart has certainly accomplished. Musicians with the David Grisman Quintet and Nickel Creek use Smart's instruments. On the soon-to-be-released recording, mandolinist Mike Marshall plays a custom-made mandola that he and Lawrence Smart designed together. Mike Marshall says Smart is an amazing instrument maker. He's just one of those handful of 
people in the world who really has a gift and, and understands how to play with wood to get it to do what you want it to do. <laughs> he's a miracle worker, and he sure enough hit the nail right on the head with this one. It's a beautiful instrument, and um, it's the greatest mandola I've ever played. To date, Smart has made 211 instruments. He averages about 10 to 12 a year. I don't plan on opening a factory or making a bunch more instruments. I uh, just kind of want to make a few instruments and get out and go skiing every now and again. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in. <laughs> I assume you do this pretty much full time now, right? Did it take a, a long time to get there? I do do it full time, and I'll let you know when I get there. <laughs> Which is really one of the beauties of this thing, because it's, as with any pursuit, the deeper you fall into it, the deeper you understand what its potential is. Smart understands that potential well. To coax music out of wood, he custom builds many of the tools he uses. He even makes his own varnish. He says it sounds better than store-bought varnish. Lawrence Smart clearly hears the potential for music in everything. For Boise State Radio, I'm Guy Hand in McCall, Idaho.